Hello friends. In the previous video, we saw that through generics we can prevent the compile time errors. Okay. So type mismatch errors type safe code will be created using generics in which type mismatch errors are caught at compile time is a key advantage. And we the once the runtime errors. What were runtime once the runtime errors now have become the compile time errors. This is a major advantage of generics. So now we will move forward with the second topic. Next topic that a generic class with two type parameters. You can declare more than one type parameter in a generic type to specify two or more type parameters. Simply use a comma separated list. For example, the following two generic two two generic class is a variation of the generic class that we have already created. Class two generic. T comma V. So T will be our first type parameter and V will be our second type parameter. T object one, V object two. Pass the constructor as usual. T object one comma V object two. Object one is equal to O one. Object two is equal to O two. Void show type. Type of T is object one dot get class dot get name. Type of V is object two dot get class dot get name. And T object T get object one return object one. T get object two return object two. So all the things are same like a previous example. Only thing is v is added over here using comma separated list. Now public static void main two generic integer string uh, two generic object is equal to new generic here two types are passed over here. After that t will be replaced by integer type wrapper class and uh, v will be replaced by string wrapper class. Then uh, two generic object dot show types it will show the display it will display the type. T and V, then integer V is equal to T G object dot get object one, and its value will be displayed over here after uh, auto unboxing. Uh, then a string is equal to T G object dot get object two, its value string is equal to displayed over here, and output is like or uh, type of T is Java dot lang dot integer, type of V is Java dot lang dot string, value is eighty eight, value is generic. Okay, so it will specify two type parameter T and V separated by comma. Because it has two type parameters, two type arguments must be passed to two generic where an object is created like integer comma string. So integer value will be 88 and string value will be generic. Integer is substituted for t and string is substituted for v. Although the two type arguments differ, in this example it is possible for both types to be same. Like we can have like string comma string is equal to new two generic string comma string a and b. In this case, both T and V would be of type string. Of course, of the if the type arguments were always the same, the two type type parameters would be unnecessary in this case. So we can have uh, if uh, there are two types parameters and both are of same same wrapper class, they can uh, then we can pass only one type wrapper class that is string. The general form of generic class generic syntax shown in the preceding examples can be generalized. Class, class name, type, parameter list. So it is a generic form, general form. Here is the syntax for declaring a reference to a generic class. Class name, type, argument list, variable name is equal to new class name, type, argument list, constant, argument list. So it is the syntax. So here will be class name, type, argument list, variable name is equal to new class name, type, argument list, constant, argument list. Now we will see the bounded type. The type parameters could be replaced by any class type. This is fine for many purposes, but sometimes it is useful to limit the type that can be passed to a type parameter. For example, assume that you want to create a generic class that contains a method that returns the average of array of numbers. Okay. Furthermore, you want to use the class to obtain the average of the array of any type number, including integer, float, and double. Okay, so you want the method that will return the average of array of numbers. So whatever numbers you will specify in that array, you will calculate its uh, average and you will return it. And you uh, that uh, type of uh, type of data that the array will hold can be float, can be double, can be integer. Okay. You want to specify the type of number generically using a type parameter to create such a class. You can try like this to create a generic class that can compute the average of array of number of any given type. The class contains an error class stats t. T numbers numbers is the array of type t. Pass the constructor reference to 
array of type t stats t o nums is equal to o okay so now t is a type whose array we will be creating uh, opening and closing square bracket and nums is the name of the array and pass the constructor reference to an array of type t like in the previous example so stat is a class name to create a generic class that can compute the average of an array of number of any given type okay so this is the unsuccessful attempt return type double double average double sum 0, 0.0 sum plus nums of i dot double value it will give you error and return sum divided by nums dot less instead the average method attempts to obtain the double version of each number in the nums array by calling the double value because all numeric classes such as in integer and double are subclasses of number and the number defines double value this method is available to all numeric wrapper classes okay so all numeric classes integer and double including all are subclasses of the base class number and it will it is defining the double value method and it's, uh, it is available to all numbers so the trouble is that the compiler has no way to understand you are intending to create stats objects for using only numeric types okay so here in this case you are having only numeric types uh, and compiler is not understanding your way to write the program. When you try to compile the stats class as error is reported that double value method is unknown because it is not known that you are uh, attempting or you are dealing with only numeric types. You need to some way to tell the compiler that you intend to pass only numeric types to T. Furthermore, you need some way to ensure that only numeric types are actually passed. Okay. Only numeric types will be replaced by t and uh, actual value will be only numeric numbers to handle such situation java provide the bounded types when specifying the type parameter you can create upper bound that declares the super class from which type arguments will be derived okay like a number in this case this is accomplished through the use of extends clause when specifying the type parameter as shown here t extends number here in this case it specifies that t can only be replaced by the super class or subclasses of that particular super class so number classes subclasses are integer float double etc etc so it, it cannot be dealing with the string it cannot be dealing with the boolean it specifies that t can only be replaced by super class or subclasses of super class the super class defines the inclusive upper limit so other than this super class you cannot inherit the t uh, cannot inherit the any, any other class. You can use the upper bound to fix the stats class shown earlier by using the number as an upper bound here in this case. T extends number. So T will be replaced by the only num numeric value. So T nums array of number of uh, subclass pass the constructor reference to an array of type number or subclass. Stats T O nums is equal to O return the type double in all cases. Double average double sum is equal to 0, 0.0. Then sum plus nums of i dot double value return sum divided by nums dot length. This is the actual implementation of code and it is returning sum divided by nums dot length. Okay. So type double will be uh, your average uh, type will be double in all the cases. So whatever sum is, sum is plus, sum is equal to sum plus nums of i dot double value okay and total sum will be calculated in this for loop iterating in this for loop and its average will be total sum divided by how many numbers are there now bounds demo main class is over here integer i numbers 1 2 3 4 5 stats of integer i object new stats of integer i numbers so your t will be replaced by integer and only integer is allowed so how it is accomplished because t only extends the number so now integer is a subclass of number so it is allowed over here then double v is equal to iob dot average iob average is v then double d numbers 1.1 2 .2, 3 .3, 4 .4, 5 .5. here uh, t will be replaced by double and uh, dob dot average dob average is w this won't compile because string is not a subclass of number because t is extending number this will not uh, compile 
आउटपुट इज एवरेज इज थ्री पॉइंट जीरो एंड एवरेज इज थ्री पॉइंट थ्री नोटिस हाउ स्टैट इज नाउ डिक्लेयर इज एक्सटेंड नंबर दैट इज द बाउंडेड टाइप बिकॉज द टाइप इज नाउ बाउंडेड बाय द अपर लिमिट दैट इज नंबर जावा कंपाइलर नोज दैट ऑल ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ टाइप टी कैन कॉल डबल वैल्यू बिकॉज इट इज अ मेथड डिक्लेयर बाय द नंबर दिस इज बाय इट सेल्फ इज अ मेजर एडवांटेज हाउ एवर एज एन बाय एडेड बोनस द बाउंडिंग ऑफ टी also prevents non numeric stats be object being created okay non numeric values are not allowed in this program if you try removing the comments from the lines at the end of the program and then re try recompiling you will receive that compile time error because string is a not subclass of number addition in addition to using class of type as bound you can also use an interface type you can specify multiple interfaces as bounds at the same time Furthermore, a bound can include both a class type and one or more interfaces. Okay. At the same time, you can bound uh, your generic type with a class as well as one or more interfaces. One class and one or more interfaces. In this case, the class type must be a specified first. When a bound includes an interface type, only type arguments that implements that interface are legal. Okay. So only type arguments. that actually implement that interface it is allowed in this case when specifying a bound that has class and an interface or multiple interfaces use the and operator to connect them class generic t extends my class and my interface okay so it is done using and operator t is bounded by class called my class interface called my interface any type argument passed to t must be of subclass my my class and implement my interface now using wild card argument uh, as useful as type safety sometimes it can get up in the way of perfectly acceptable constructs for example given the stats class shown at the end of the preceding section assume that you want to add a method called same average that determines if two stats object contains arrays that yield the same average no matter what type of numeric data each object holds okay you want to add a method called same average if two stat object contain array that yield the same average same average will be written over here no matter what type of numeric data if the one object contains double values 1.0 2.0 and 3.0 and other is giving 1 2 and 3 in the integer format averages will be same <coughs> one way to implement same average is to pass it as a stats argument and then compare the average of that argument against the invoking object returning to it the so both the averages are the same for example uh, 1 2 3 4 5 1.1 2.2 3.3 4.4 5.5 so, so i object and the t object should be the same if it is the same it will display averages are same okay else averages are not same at first creating same average seems like an easy problem because stats is generic and its average method can work on any type of stats object it seems that creating same average would be straight forward and trouble starts as soon as you try to declare parameters of type stats so practically it is not so easy because stats is a parameterized type you what you do specify for stats type parameter when you declare of the parameter of that type so what you will specify as a parameter you will specify integer or you specify double that is the problem you might think a solution like this boolean same average stats t object if average is equal to is equal to ob dot average return true else return false so the trouble with this attempt is that it will work only with the other stat object whose type is the same as the invoking object it will work only with the other stats object only other stats object whose type is same as the invoking object this is the problem if the invoking object is of type stats integer then the parameter ob must uh, also be of stats integer because stats is a parameterized type right? it can be used to compare the average of an object of type stats double with the average of type stats short for example so stats integer and stats integer will be compared stats double and stats double will be compared not stats integer stats double will be compared because this approach won't work except in a very narrow in a very narrow, narrow situation and does not yield a general that is a generic solution 
So to create a generic same average method, you must use another feature of Java generic that is a wildcard argument. So how you will create it using the question mark and it represents the unknown type. Using a wildcard, here is the one way to write a same average method. Boolean same average stats object question mark. So unknown type, you don't know the type of the array you are passing over here. If average is equal to is equal to ob dot average return type. So average and uh, ob dot average. So ob can be of any type and you should be able to compare the two averages. It will return true, otherwise it will return false. Here stats matches any stats object allowing any two stats object to have their averages compared. The following program will uh, tell you the t extends number same as the previous example t numbers array of type then pass the constructor with the parameterized constructor return double in all cases average double sum is equal to zero all the things are same now we will see use the wildcard boolean same average stats object if average is equal to is equal to ob dot average return to otherwise return false now wildcard save stats of integer are object new stats of integer i nux double v iob dot uh, average iob average is v double nums new stats double d nums dob dot average float nums then new stats float f nums double x fob dot average okay so three double averages are over here v then w then x now averages of iob and dob if iob dot same same uh, same average they are the same as in system dot out dot print ln differ averages of iob and fob if it is same are same otherwise it is different so output is iob average is 3.0 dob average is 3.3 fob average is 3.0 and all are the same it is important to understand that the wildcard does not detect what type of stats object can be created okay this is governed by the extends clause in the stats declaration we have already given because it is only extending the number class the wildcard simply matches any valid stats object okay so this way we have completed the second part of generics in the next session we will cover the uh, third part or theory part so meet you in the next session thank you so much